depending on who you ask, you get a lot of mixed reviews when it comes to Final Fantasy X II. And it's a very straight down the middle for it's a mediocre game or it's a great game. There is no in between and it caused a lot of controversy over the time out of all Final Fantasy games. Yes, even including 13. However, that's not all we're here to talk about today. Today we're going to be finding out how overpowered you can get Yuna, Riku and Pain in Chapter 1. Now, the rules here are quite simple. We're not going to be using the Creature Creator or Capture too much. We're just going to be taking advantage of the Fiend Arena, the Tournaments and the Battle Simulator. So, without further ado, let's get into it. This, let's find out just how overpowered we can get in Chapter 1 before doing anything outside of the tutorial levels. So, let's get into it. So, first things first, we need to spend approximately about an hour, maybe two, learning every ability for Yuna, I'm sorry, for Riku and Pain on the Thief and Warrior Dress Spears. Not so much for the Thief, but hey, we might as well while we're here, right? So, the best thing to do is just think of this as like your SS Licky for Sin Scale Farming. Uh, infinitely spawning, there is a heal point just outside, like with the Yuna in the Moogle suit, so there's no reason why you can't just, you know, not die and farm a lot. Now, if you have a turbo controller, uh, it's a lot easier because you can just stand by the Moogle, have it set up to mash X, heal, fight, heal, fight, nice and easy. If the spawns do start to slow down, which they do after a while, just leave the area and come back in and they'll already pick up again. So again, you could literally just leave it on. If you're playing on PC, then times four speed it and you are good to go. You can get this done within an hour. I, however, am playing on the PS4 version of the game. So I have no times four. For whatever reason, Square Enix didn't want to add it. So this is going to make grinding a lot more fun and tedious. Ah, oh well, what can you do? So I spent about, I think about two hours here to learn all of Riku and Pain's abilities for Thief and the Warrior the Army Grid and yeah I mean we've got some nice XP, we've got some rewards, gives us a nice jump as we're moving forward so after your grind's done and you've learned everything for both Dress Spears let's get into the last bit of the story where we fight Logos and Ormi, still with silver glasses, you know, just get some free early accessories they're not very good but hey if they're free you might as well grab them Nice and simple, not too much to say, I kind of just steal the thing and then go just use a soul to take care of it, because hey, why not right? Not much else to do in this situation. <laughs> so, fun fact, the dress, uh, the dance dress bit actually has an attack animation, and it's pretty funny. I assume it works for all white mage, black mage, and the fun thing about the song dress, the dance song dress, dress spear, <laughs> when you hear it, you see little musical notes, which is great. Right, so this is what we got for about two hours worth of grinding. Again, if you're playing on PC, you can easily do this in an hour with a times four speed. But hey, we like to suffer here. So we finish up the Mount Gagazette tutorial and get ourselves one of the more important dress spears that we're going to be needing for the start of this run, which is the Black Mage Dress Spear. It's going to be where the majority of our damage comes from. So now we've done that, we've got everything we're ready to set up for at the start. We just need to grind. Get some early levels, get some AP in, because we're going to need the Black Mages with the Gar spells and ideally the Turbo Magic. You don't really need a festive, um, <laughs> anyone using the festive dress spear, I just didn't have anything for pain, so yeah, there she goes. So yeah, we just learned Fire on Riku. So yeah, again, this is one of the beautiful things about the battle arena is you can just farm endlessly on the airship without having to go and you constantly get healed your health and MP back which is fantastic as you can see we're doing the coil the coil, coil oh my god the coyote and the red elements trying to get them AP points you see we've learned the raw spells so far right so after a few bits of grinding you should be high enough level now to take on the first the standard cup with the levels you have along with the abilities you've learned it should be a cakewalk Again, there's no real reason for uh, <laughs> pain to be in the festive. I just thought, why not? I never use it. So yeah, let's just get this going. So again, the only reason we're wanting to do the standard cup is because we want the 
the Psychic Dress Spears. That's going to make our grinding so much easier. On top of that, we're also going to want to do the Standard Cup three times to get the inter Interped Garment Grid. I don't know how to say that. I'm probably just butchering it, but hey, hey yo. And we're going to want to unlock the Standard Cup hard to get to our main source of grinding. So once we get both of them out of the way, it's more a case of grinding up the Psychic Dress Spear as well. So as you're going to see, I'm going to be keep. So my goal right now is to get the Psychic Dress Spear. I'm going to be keeping Yuna as a Black Mage and rotating, well, having both Pain and Riku as Psychics because there's a special move called Telekinesis which has the ability to remove an enemy out of battle completely for a nice easy win and XP. So here we go, we've got the Psychic Dress Spear. And we're going to be farming up the Black Elemental, or we're looking for the Black Chandelier uh, fight in the Standard Cup. So after a bit of grinding away at the Psychic Dress Spear and the Black Mage, we've now come up to level 19 and 20. And we're going to just be winning in the Standard Cup for the third time now, getting the Interpede Gun Grid, whatever it's called, and unlocking the Standard Cup hard. Again, the best way to grind at this point is just pick one, any of the fights you have access to and just go for it. So, we're going to enter into the Standard Cup hard now, and we don't need to win this cup, not yet. All we're looking for is the Black Chandelier fight, which we got really lucky and it's the first fight we have to do. Because we're not really strong enough to take out anything else here yet. And of course we get ambushed. Okay, great. So. We're going to be jumping in now, doing our telekinesis. Like I said, the best thing to do is just grind up any fight you want. Uh, once you do it three times and you get the inspiration, just go around the whole grid, get the triple AP, and it makes your life so much easier. So now that fight's done, we get a whopping 670 experience points, which is amazing at this point. Now we can either lose or potentially win the rest of that cup. Now, the main thing we're going to be doing here is spending roughly about I'm not quite sure how long we're going to be spending here, but we're going to be spending a while and getting some levels. I'm probably going to go to about level 30, maybe 35, and that will make it so we can easily telekinesis near enough every enemy in the Standard Cup hard, making it just a breeze to move forward and unlock anything else. At this point, I wasn't using the Interpid Garment Grid like an idiot. I should have done and got all the AP and moved around, but hey. You know, what can you do? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I like to make things more challenging for myself. So, yeah, as you can see, do that. Get a whopping 670 experience, which is fantastic. So with this game, you don't even need to press X. You can hold X. The only time you need to press X is while you are literally entering the fight. So again, if you have a turbo controller, it's fantastic. If you have a standard controller, then you can literally just press X Watch it like have a film on, watch YouTube, press X whenever the fight's over, and then just hold X if you have your memory cursor set to the uh the cursor set to memory instead of default and it makes life so much easier. So yeah, we're gonna be doing this for a while. Grab a few juicy levels and then we'll move on. So after grinding to about level 35, we were ready to take on the standard cup hard and unlock the grand cup. Uh not quite ready for the Grand Cup yet, so let's just go through the Standard Cup and look for Hell Breeders fight, which has a good chance of showing up. And in the Standard Cup hard has a much better no, sorry, the Grand Cup has a much better chance of showing up. So once we unlock that fight, we just hit hit them all up with that telekinesis, send them out for a whopping 2,000 experience. And to be fair, level up in this game is actually a lot easier than I remember. I remember when I first played through, I used Lady Luck to just power level me through the game. You know, for the double XP, and oh my days, I didn't... To imagine playing the game again and realizing you don't actually need Lady Luck to level up really quickly. So yeah, you get night from Hellbreeders, you get a whopping two, I think it's 2,310 experience point per fight. The fight takes like two seconds, but it don't take two seconds. It takes like a minute or two. Uh, if they oversaw, even better, you're walking away with about 3,000 experience, which is fantastic. I've been grinding this since level 35, I am now at level, finger, if I'm not mistaken, level 77. And I've done this for the majority of my of that jump from 35 to 77. 
which is fantastic. Well, a long while we'll still getting AP for the for the group. So next on the agenda is trying to get <laughs> trying to complete the Grand Cup hard. Ugh. We need to unlock the Youth League Cup now to get right. as physically strong as we can at this point in the game. Some of you can probably see where I'm going with this. And what we're planning to do, unfortunately we can't take out the Mega Tomberry. However, there is a really good possibility we can take out the Shady Duo. So if we hit him up with that Telekinesis, I currently have Pain outside of the Dress Sphere. I think it was for if we end up in a situation with the Mega Tomberry, I had Sentinel and the Warrior Dress Sphere. Now, if for those who don't know how Telekinesis works, it's based on your level. The, mo the higher your level is, the more likely you are to remove a fiend from the battle. However, it doesn't always work in a case of even at level 99, it still has chances to miss, depending on the enemy. So against Shady Duo, it's not going too well at all. And after a while and considerably more grinding up to around level 80 odd, maybe even 90, I still couldn't get lucky with it. So I had to uh, <laughs> had to employ some help, which of something I really was trying to avoid in this run as I wanted it to be completely Yuno Riku in pain. However, something did click in the sense of we're not going to be using them for ages. It's just for one little scenario where I will still be using the character to have full control over what happens. So first things first, we need to go find ourselves a fire elemental. Some of you can see where this is going, but yeah, we'll grab this fire elemental and we'll call him the juicy old subscribe because these videos take a while to make and if you've enjoyed it so far, why not drop a subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. And yes, selfless plug -in coming. <laughs> Next on the list, we need to get ourselves a juicy old Tonberry. To be honest, I do enjoy using these guys. I don't like them as much in general to use, but they're fun. So we're going to call this one the Likeberry, because if you're enjoying this video, <laughs> drop a like. <laughs> Alright, enough selfless, no, enough shameless plugging. Let's carry on with the rest of this video. So now with our Tomberry and Fire Elemental, and we, I mean we grab a Chocobo from somewhere, I can't remember where, but we need to do the Chocobo Cup to get some Regal Crowns. And with the like, the Tomberry and the Red Elemental, a Darkness or two is easy enough to take out Shady Duo, and that's consistently. So we go through, we still struggle with the Mega Tomberry, but that's not even important anymore, because Shady Duo normally always beats the Mega Tomberry. So after our three wins I believe it is, or two wins, whatever, however many wins it is, we unlock the Youth League Tournament, which is the main goal we've been working towards. Also I put no stat increases into my creatures, I only put abilities, these are just the standard creatures, I've got a level 94 or 84, whatever, whatever level I am. As you see I'm using Pain to heal so I have some control over what's going on, and using Tomberries and elemental to carry on the fight unfortunately you know sometimes pain does die and there's no i didn't put life in any of my creatures because i'm smart but i mean you don't need life when you can when you can poke them and you've got flare right and darkness like what well, you don't need it anyway keeper goes down without much of a issue so after completing the youth league cup for the first time you are awarded with the mascot dress spear one of the strongest dress spears in the game and will become a vital point a vital thing for the rest of this run. So, what do we do now? Well, we have to farm AP. After farming AP for approximately, well, way longer than I wanted to, having a ribbon on all three characters and mascot completed, and to be fair, most of the dress spears, we head into the Youth League Cup yet again to redeem ourselves and get the dub without any creatures. Now, yes, we use creatures to get ourselves mascot, however, I never said we wouldn't completely use them, it just so happened it was a rule I ended up bending, just ever so slightly to at least ensure and save myself about 10 hours worth of trying on the Shady Duo just to unlock it. <laughs> Either way, we didn't use them OTT, we literally just used them a small little bit just to, just to help us progress a small bit, which 
Yes, I bent my own rule, but hey, it was a rule I put in there that ended up backfiring with how annoying Shady Duo and Megaton Berry are. Anyway, so we're going through the Youth League Cup. We can more or less tackle any boss in the game now, story-wise. We can easily beat any of the secret bosses in the story, i.e. Tremor, Paragon, Chak, anything here. The only thing that we are str going to struggle with in Chapter 1 is accessories. Yes, there is the Far Plane Cup for better accessories, and I do understand that you can get some good ones from the Youth League Cup. However, once you beat the Youth League Cup enough times, you will run into the Crimson Squad. Unfortunately, the Crimson Squad can be a bit much to handle at this point, like I said, due to lack of decent accessories. So, without a Speed Bracer, uh, well, I mean, you don't need a speed race as such because you you know, can do the thing, but you need stuff that can make your life a lot easier, like Ragnarok zero MP cost, all of that, because Nuge will deplete your MP like nobody's business, and we can't be having that because once we run out of MP, we're in a pickle. <laughs> as you can see here, we're kind of getting low on MP now. The light full attack dealing 5,000 fixed damage is a pain, and always having to make sure. I have HP to survive. I ended up using Riku more as a white mage during the, the fight with Nuge, and I don't think just off the fight with Nuge alone, I had to hear to like double check everyone. <laughs> like had thing and I had to plan what I was how I was gonna heal. And I don't think we're quite ready to tackle the Crimson Squad. However, with this setup alone, you are more than ready to take on the rest of the game. From the start to the end of the story. Nothing can beat you now. You are 100% overpowered. And believe it or not, it only took me... It took me under 20 hours to learn all the abilities in every... Uh, it was in every dress spear, minus the gun mage. It took me barely any... And to get the mascot, reached near enough level 99. I mean, you could grind the extra few levels if you want. I'm level 94, 95. I'm happy with it at the minute. But yeah. Guys, that is how overpowered you can get in chapter 1 without using the creature creator too much. If you did enjoy, drop a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what video, what games you want to see me get overpowered in next, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.